Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. And I do want to get you back to this breaking news that we are following out of Israel right now. Again, a reported terror attack that has killed one person and wounded 11 others. You can see this video that did come in from the scene a short time ago. Glass shattered there as gunshots were fired. And we are told by Israeli officials that it appears three Palestinian men are responsible for that shooting. As we get more details, we will make sure to bring those to you right here on Live Now from Fox. In the meantime, I do want to take you out to the latest briefing here that came in from the Israeli government as Avi Hyman, the spokesperson for the government, answered questions from members of the media. Let's pop up the audio here and listen in raw and unfiltered. Hyman, this is day 139 of the October 7th war. I want to start this briefing by addressing the brutal terror attack that we faced this morning on Highway 1 between Mali Adumim and Jerusalem. During rush hour, three Palestinian terrorists got out of their vehicle in a line of traffic and began spraying automatic gunfire at random. Just imagine someone shooting commuters in their cars on their way to work. 26-year-old Matan El Maliach from Mali Adumim was murdered. All the people of Israel share in the grief of his family. Eight innocent victims with varying degrees of injury, including a pregnant woman, were evacuated to Jerusalem hospitals. The three Palestinian terrorists were residents of the Bethlehem area. They were neutralized by our security forces. Now to the south of Israel. Air raid sirens were heard this morning in Eilat at 6 a.m. Israel's Arrow aerial defense system successfully intercepted a launch en route in the area of the Red Sea before it entered Israeli territory. Now an update regarding yesterday's vote in the Knesset. An overwhelming majority of Israeli lawmakers voted against international attempts to unilaterally recognize a Palestinian state. 99 out of 120 members of Knesset voted to reject ivory tower diktats from beyond our shores. Israel is a sovereign state with a democratically elected government. The will of the people has spoken. Today, we stand more united than ever. Calling it a landmark vote that underscores Israel's collective resolve, Prime Minister Netanyahu stated, we will not reward terrorism by unilateral recognition in response to October, to the October 7th massacre nor will we accept imposed solutions. This strong stance sends a powerful message to the world. Peace and security for Israel will be achieved through negotiations, not through unilateral actions. Now, an important series of revelations published yesterday by the Association of Rape Crisis Centers in Israel. This comprehensive report details Hamas's sexual and gender-based violence during and since the October 7th massacre. It's a difficult read, but it must be read. Brutal acts of violent rape at gunpoint. Rape with multiple terrorists. Rape in front of family members designed to humiliate. Hamas pursued victims, dragged them by their hair. Most of the victims were killed. Victims' bodies mutilated and bound. Sexual organs attacked, weapons inserted into them, bodies booby-trapped. Released hostages have revealed that sexual abuse against those still held in Hamas captivity is ongoing. The report clearly states that targeted sexual abuse was not a one-off bug, as some have suggested. It is a feature of Hamas's operational strategy. I highly encourage you to look at the report. 
Now, uh, an update from Gaza. Over the last 24 hours, the IDF has continued its mission to eliminate terrorists with targeted raids. In Zaytun and Khan Yunis, the IDF killed a total of 35 terrorists, destroying their tunnels and infrastructure. The Navy destroyed vessels used by the Hamas and, Islami and Islamic Jihad terrorists. An update from the north. Earlier today, numerous rocket launches were identified, crossing from Lebanon into the area of Kiryat Shmona and Yuval. The IDF struck the sources of fire. That brings us to an end of today's briefing. I'll be happy to take your questions. Please put them in the chat, and please do let us know what outlet you're working for. Thank you. Thank you. First question from Jim Williams at Zenga International News Service, Washington, D.C. There are a number of uh, media reports that senior Hamas official Musa Abu Marzuk is very optimistic that a hostage deal can be reached soon. Does the Prime Minister and the Israeli negotiators uh, share that optimism? Jim, as I've said from day one, and as we have said as a government from day one, there are two key objectives in this war. One is to destroy Hamas their military capabilities and their governance over Gaza. And the second is to bring every last hostage home. Um, I won't make the mistake of uh, negotiating the release of hostages over a press conference. I'll leave that to uh, those working very hard around the clock. Next question from Dr. Abby Korb from SWC. The French government and the Hostage and Missing Families Forum both issued statements yesterday citing that confirmation has been received of 45 hostages having received medications sent by France. Do you have any comments on this? As well, what confirmation was received uh, regarding proof of life? So uh, I, I've seen those reports as well. Um, I certainly hope that they're true, but uh, I cannot confirm uh, categorically that uh, that is in fact the case. Question from Joel Pollack at Breitbart News. The Biden administration is reportedly planning new sanctions against Israeli citizens accused of settler violence. Uh, though the individual sanctioned thus far uh, have not been charged with any crimes. What's Israel's response to this policy, which has been copied, which has uh, been copied by other governments around the world and which allows sanctions in theory against any Israeli who supports citizens across the Green Line. So the Prime Minister has been uh, quite unequivocal on this, that uh, we think this, uh, this doesn't make sense. We're talking about a population, depending on how you uh, count them, uh, there's between 500,000 to 800,000 residents of Judea and Samaria. Um, the overwhelming majority of which are law-abiding citizens. So to point to a handful of, uh, uh, of people that are allegedly breaking the law um, out of a population so large um, seems somewhat extreme. Um, and uh, we don't understand it. As far as Israel is concerned, we have mechanisms, we have uh, laws in place and uh, a very good police force. And if there are issues with people breaking the law, the uh, police will deal with them directly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, same time uh, on Monday. Thank you.